Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song broadcast for this third day of October. And today's topic is titled, The Mirror of Examination. And this is the third and final part of this series on these different mirrors. And yesterday and the day before, we covered um, the Mirror of Restoration on the first, and then yesterday, the Mirror of Transformation, and today, the Mirror of Examination for this third day of October, and it is Sunday, and so uh, before we get started on that, I'm going to sing today's scripture song, which is from uh, Psalms 115, verse 3. Before I get started on that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior today, if you'll just humble yourself and admit you can't get to heaven your own way, and it's only by Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to Scripture. Amen. All right, so let me press play here, and we'll get started and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. Psalms 115.3 But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Amen. But God is in the heavens, he hath done whatsoever, he hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. But our God is in the heavens, he hath done whatsoever, he hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. But our God is in the heavens, Done whatsoever he had done, whatsoever he had pleased. Our God is in the heavens, he had done whatsoever he had done, whatsoever he had pleased. Amen. All right, so we'll go back and do that towards the end of the broadcast, but now it's time to get into today's Baptist Bread devotional, and today again is the Mirror of Examination, so praise the Lord, and encourage you to go check out the first two uh, mirrors from uh, the first and the second, and we'll conclude it with today's mirror, the Mirror of Examination, for this third day of October, and the passage is from James 123b, it says, He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. James 1.23b. And again, today's author is R.G. That is the initials for uh, Rick Gravely, I believe it is. Yep, Rick Gravely, and he's the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Rossville, Georgia. So let me read you what he wrote on this topic of the mirror of examination. All right, he says today, The purpose of a mirror is so we can examine ourselves. The mirror helps us make ourselves presentable to others. If the mirror is used consistently, uh, it brings the best results. However, there are some in life that don't see the importance of examination, right? Uh, they merely glance at things. Yeah, and we're all guilty of that. Others see themselves but move on, uh, forgetting what they saw. Some even go uh, so far as to bypass the mirror altogether. They see no importance in examining themselves. Mm. And that's probably why people dress the way they do. So many uh, people these days dress the way they do because they don't examine themselves before they walk out the front door and think they look uh, all that good when they really don't or they just don't care what people think about them and the way they dress. And um, So you need to make sure that's important. Uh, amen. All right, so, continuing on, it says, Self-examination is vital in order for us to know who we really are. The mirror of God's word will give us a proper view. Amen. Uh, it will show us who we really are. We need God's word in our lives daily, right? I cannot express enough how important it is to put ourselves before God's book and allow it to reveal us to ourselves. Right. Amen. Uh, he says there, and then he continues on, he says, I never like what I see in the mirror, and I'm sure you don't always either. Right? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, however, if we neglect it, our appearance won't get better, but grow worse. We can't be ruled by the fear of the mirror. Remember, the same mirror that shows the flaw also gives you the ability to deal with it. And he says, I'm glad the Bible examines us for who we really are, but it also shows us how to fix our flaws. Amen. Uh, these uh, three Bible mirrors we, uh, we've discussed are vital in our lives. We see how the Word of God is used for examination, restoration, and transformation. Keep looking, he says, so keep looking. Amen. Oh, keep getting in that Bible and looking and examining yourself and, and fixing those flaws and those uh, shortcomings and all that stuff that we have in the flesh. Amen. So praise God for these uh, three mirrors, the mirror of examination, restoration, and transformation. Amen. All right, so that is it for the Baptist Bread Devotional, and uh, sometimes I like to read these um, these devotions from this other book because they're pretty good, so today's was pretty good. I was looking at it and reading it, and uh, so this is for October 3rd, so in a second, and uh, this is from the book. This is another devotional book I read. It's uh, titled Daily Devotionals for the Christian Soldier. And Boots on the Ground is the actual title of it, and it was written by Randy Wells, and this is the cover of the book here, amen, so if you're wanting to get a copy of that, it's pretty good, these daily devotionals. All right, so this one is for today, it's titled No Wall of Division, and this uh, took place on the 3rd of October, 1990, and the passage is from Ephesians 2.14, it says, For he is our peace. Who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Ephesians 2.14 Alright, so let me read this to you. It says, During the last part of World War II, Allied leaders met in the uh, Kremlin, uh, Kremlin uh, Peninsula at a resort town called Yalta. The aim of this meeting was to uh, essentially parcel out portions of Germany to the nations that had contributed most to the Nazis' defeat, the United States, Britain, France, and the Soviet Union. With the uh, advent of the Cold War, however, Germany ended up being divided into two blocks, East and West Germany, with the Berlin Wall becoming a tangible separation for nearly 30 years, the two Germanys remained at odds. Finally, in June 1990, the process of tearing down the wall began, and on uh, the 3rd of October 1990, East and West Germany officially reunited to become one Germany. A physical separation caused great challenges for the people of Berlin, but above the logistical and familial uh, separation brought by the Berlin Wall, uh, there stands a massive separation between God and mankind. The middle wall of partition, Ephesians 2, 1 through 18, details how, uh, because of our sin, we were separated from God, and as verses 11 through 18 describe, the Gentiles were even further alienated from God as they were strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world, verse 12. However, when the Lord Jesus Christ died for the sins of man on Calvary, he made it uh, possible for all men to have access to God. Hallelujah! This truth has incredibly wonderful ramifications. First and best, it means God has given us direct access to himself through Christ. Second, it means there should be no ethnic or racial divisions, as uh, were common among the first century Jews and Gentiles, among the people of God. And finally, it means that we should do all we can to lead others to Christ, that they too may, ha may know the joy of uh, reunification with God. Amen. So, praise the Lord for that. That was a good uh, good devotional there. Um, amen. So let's make sure we're doing everything to 
get people to Jesus, and so they have an opportunity to trust Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Amen. So they too can have an opportunity to spend eternity with Him in heavenly places. Amen. All right. So I just wanted to read that uh, other one to you today because it was really good. Amen. All right. Let me get a drink of water here. All right. Now we'll get into today's hymn and hymn story. All right. Let me do this because it's easier sometimes to read these without my glasses on. All right. So today's hymn and hymn story is from the hymn. Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him. And this was published by Thomas Cor Coram, C-O-R-A-M, and John H. Wilcox. And so uh, there's two stanzas here. And the first one uh, goes like this. It says, Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him. Praise him, angels in the height, sun and moon, rejoice before him. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise the Lord, for he has spoken, worlds his, um, worlds his mighty uh, voice obeyed, laws which never shall be broken, for their guidance he hath made. And then the second stanza, praise the Lord, for he is uh, glorious, never shall his promise fail, God hath made his saints victorious, sin and death shall not prevail. Praise the Lord for our salvation. Hosts on high his power proclaim. Heavens and earth and all creation laud and magnify his name. Amen. So that is the hymn. Praise ye the Lord. Or praise the Lord. Ye heavens adore him. I'll get into the story here. And this was written in 1796. And the passage is from Psalm 30 verse 4. So... Let me grab the Bible here and we'll say, uh, read that passage, Psalm 30 and verse 4. All right, turn there, Psalm 30 and verse 4. All right, 30 and verse 4 says, uh, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Amen. I believe that's a scripture song also. Amen. All right, so go ahead and... Read you the story here and the background music. All right, so this is the story behind the hymn, Praise the Lord, Ye Heavens Adore Him. It says, one of Christianity's uh, legacies is its concern for the fatherless. The Bible, excuse me, the Bible tells us 44 times that God regards the plight of the orphans and that we should do the same. But in 17th century England, Little was being done. It was commonplace to see babies left on the doorsteps of abandoned or, or abandoned in latrines. London has its fashionable spots, but most, excuse me, but much of the city was gripped by poverty and disease, with thousands living atop one another in mucky slums. Uh, Captain Thomas Coram, who lived from 1668 to 1751, a devout uh, Angli uh, Anglican and friend of the Wesleys uh, determined to do something. Coram, who wasn't really a captain, the title was honorary, was a traitor on the high seas who had been sent by a group of merchants to set up the first shipyard in Massachusetts. Returning to London after ten years in the colonies, he was shocked to learn that London had become a city of abandoned babies. Left to die on dung heaps, he complained to anyone who would listen. Uh, not being a wealthy man, Coram approached the rich men of London, soliciting donations for a hospital and orphanage for foundlings, infants found on the streets. No one would help. I could no more prevail with them then I, if I had asked them to pull down their britches and present their backsides to the king and queen, he wrote in disgust. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'm going to say it. So he wrote that in disgust. All right, continuing on, it says, But when he appealed to the wives of London's wealthy men, he found a responsive audience. Finally, the charter was granted, the funds procured, and the foundling hospital opened in 1741. On its first night, hundreds of desperate women 
gathered at its doors, each with a child in her arms. Uh, soon, London's artists threw their support behind the project, filling the institution with their paintings and music. The great composer, George Handel, uh, gave benefit to the performances of his Messiah to help raise funds. The London Funding Hospital became known for its beautiful singing and children's choirs. <clears throat> In 1796, Coram published a hymn book entitled Psalms, Hymns, and Anthems of the Found Foundling Hospital, London, uh, paste, uh, pasted, uh, pasted into the cover of this book was an anonymous hymn entitled Praise the Lord, Ye Heavens Adore Him. To this day, no one knows who wrote it, but it will forever be associated with God's love for children and his concern for the fatherless. Hmm. Interesting uh, story behind this hymn. Amen. All right, so that was the uh, end of that hymn and hymn story. And tomorrow's hymn and hymn story will be from the hymn, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. And this is written by Timothy Dwight and Aaron Williams. This was written in 1800. And the passage will be from Psalms 137, verses 5 through 6. Amen. So that'll be tomorrow's hymn and hymn story. So... Praise the Lord. All right. Go ahead and put that aside. And go ahead and sing some scripture songs, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Amen. All right. So we'll go ahead and do uh, yesterday's scripture song. Amen. All right. So we'll go up here. Make sure I do this right. All right. Psalms 98.1. Yep. Oh, sing, sing unto, unto the Lord, Lord a new song. song. For he, he hath, hath done marvelous things, his, his right hand and his, and his holy arm, arm hath gotten him the victory. victory. Amen. Oh, sing, sing unto the Lord, oh, sing unto the Lord, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. For he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm Hath gotten him the victory O oh, sing, sing, sing unto the Lord Sing unto the Lord Oh, sing unto the Lord A new song For he hath done Marvelous things His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Oh, sing, 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 oh, sing, 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 oh, sing, sing, sing. Amen. All right, now we'll do today's Psalms 115.3. But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Amen. But our God is in the heavens, he hath done whatsoever he hath done, whatsoever he hath pleased. But our God is in the heavens, he hath done whatsoever he hath done, whatsoever he hath pleased. But our God is in the heavens, he hath done. Whatsoever he had done, whatsoever he had pleased, our God is in the heavens. He had done whatsoever he had done, whatsoever he had pleased. Amen. All right. Well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. But before I go. Let me go ahead and give you tomorrow's scripture song and then tomorrow's Baptist Bread devotional. So tomorrow will be the 4th and we'll be singing 1 Corinthians 13.13. 13. It says, And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Amen. And uh, Brother James has been going over the book of 1 Corinthians uh, so far. They've been pretty good messages, so if you want to go check those out, they're available on the YouTube page by typing in James Knox Sermons, or you can go to the website at www 
www.jameswnox.org. Amen. And then, of course, the scripture songs here. This is the book. Uh, if you want to order a book, they're on the um, website here, along with the CDs. And um, we're in October. Um, so the website is www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And then the Baptist Spread Devotionals. Uh, this is the cover from last month and this month. And so you can order those by going to this website at www.timgreenministries.org. Amen. And then the uh, book here that I'm reading out of is Then Sings My Soul, Book 2. And this is 150 of the World's Greatest Hymn Stories, written by Robert J. Morgan. Amen. And then tomorrow's hymn, the hymn story will be again from the hymn, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. Amen. All right, so... That'll be it for today, so thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until uh, next time, amen. All right, bye for now. Thanks for watching.